Okay, students, good morning to you all. So, yes, last session we finished with applications of biotechnology. With that, we have covered up the all important aspect of genetics. All the five chapters of genetics are over. And today, we go into a very, very interesting topic, a fantastic concept. What are you all going to become doctors for? To treat different kinds of diseases. So in this chapter, we are going to talk about the very common diseases, cancer, typhoid, malaria, filariasis. And of course, today we start off with a very, very dangerous disease, the all-important AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, the concept of HIV infection AIDS, which is still today one of the most lethal diseases and one of the most panicking diseases globally. It's a pandemic like the coronavirus. AIDS is there all over the world. Let's analyze in detail everything about the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome AIDS. AIDS has been reported as a deficiency of your immune system. Aapka immunity ka ho jata hai, that is the main problem of HIV infection or AIDS. And it was first reported in 1981. So this is a relatively new disease. Some 40 years ago, HIV AIDS has been detected. Can you imagine tuberculosis, cancer are there since centuries worldwide, but AIDS is a new disorder. Only in the last 40 years, HIV has spread all over the world and it has killed more than 25 million people worldwide. So big number of people have died because of AIDS. AIDS is caused by human immunodeficiency virus called the HIV virus. The human immunodeficiency virus, which is a retrovirus. What is the name of retroviruses? They have got an envelope enclosing RNA genome. So, HIV virus may RNA hota hai. And sir, I hope you remember, RNAs cannot undergo replication. So, how will HIV multiply? First, RNA will become DNA and then the DNA will replicate and then the DNA will again become RNA so RNA becomes DNA replicates again becomes RNA and such viruses are now called as retroviruses so HIV is a retrovirus and so how is HIV transmitted Primarily, HIV is a sexually transmitted disease. Sexual contact with an infected person, oral sex or vaginal sex or anal sex called as sodomy. If the male is infected and he has sexual intercourse with a female, then his ejaculated semen will have HIV virus and she will become infected. Or if she is infected, her vaginal fluids will enter into the urethra and the male will get infected. So heterosexually it passes by vaginal or seminal fluids. Similarly, oral sex. If the genital organs of a male or female come in contact with oral cavity while having oral sex, there is seminal fluid release in the mouth or if vaginal fluid is released in the mouth, then it can cause infection of the buccal mucosa and HIV can spread by this mechanism. Or HIV spreads by anal sex called sodomy. In gays, male homosexuals, one sexual partner inserts his penis into the anal canal of the other male partner and the sexual intercourse takes place which is called as sodomy. And when the penis is thrust in the anal canal and the ejaculation takes place, the anal mucosa is very delicate. 
it will instantly rupture and do you remember around the anus there are a lot of blood vessels piles are protrusion of blood vessels to the anus hiv will enter into the blood vessels around the anus spread in the body and that is the way sodomy or anal sex causes transmission of hiv virus it also spreads by transfusion of contaminated blood and blood products इन द यस्टर्स 1980 के पहले जब एच के बारे में इतना नॉलेज नहीं था द वायरस वॉज ऑलरेडी देयर इन द सोसाइटी एंड दिस वायरस हैज स्प्रेड फ्रॉम वन पर्सन टू दी अदर बाय ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूशन अपोज ये पहले होता था नाउ डेज ब्लड इज ऑलवेज चेक फॉर एच वायरस and only when it is given from one person to the other so nowadays it doesn't spread by blood transfusion but when not a lot of knowledge was there about hiv blood transfusion say hiv transmit why also by sharing infected needles in case of intravenous drug abusers so if people are taking drugs and they are injecting drugs heroin brown sugar cocaine and ke injection diye jaate hain and you find that many of these drug addicts have the drug together and one of them injects a drug in his uh, vein and he removes the needle and syringe he gives it to another person he transmits it into himself and so uh, the drug is administered into that person if one person is also infected with hiv then a drug used by syringe and needle will pass it to other people and intravenous drug abusers may hiv bahut commonly pass ho raha hai also from a child born to an hiv infected mother transplacental and also by breast milk now this is a sad thing about hiv virus hiv can pass via placenta umbilical cord into the fetus so if mother is infected the child via placenta umbilical cord also becomes infected and god grace if a child does not get infected transplacentally that after the child is born every time the mother will breastfeed her child the child will get the infection by a breast milk which is rich in hiv virus so so sexually pass hota hai transplacentally and uh, blood trans uh, uh, transplacentally and breast milk se pass hota hai blood transfusion se pass ho sakta hai drug abuse by intravenous syringes and needles this se hiv pass hota hai so hiv passes by these mechanisms now what makes hiv such a deadly virus if you look at the virus under a microscope what will you find so this virus is a globular or spherical virus only 100 nanometers in diameter Ultra microscopic, 100 nanometers in diameter. It has got a strong coat of lipids. So lipids are a coat, hota hai, and this lipid coat has got glycoproteins attached to it. Glycoprotein, namely a protein envelope, envelope protein called as GP120. and one more envelope protein called as gp41 so this is gp120 this is gp41 that is glycoprotein 120 glycoprotein 41 underneath it are two protein coats and namely we have a protein coat yellow over here called as the capsule protein which is present here and the yellow one is the matrix protein the matrix protein which is called as protein 17 and the capsule protein which is called as protein 24 and we have lipid coat glycoprotein 120 glycoprotein 41 and then we have matrix protein p17 capsular protein called as p24 and inside this 
is found the genetic material two strands of RNA. Mind you, not DNA, but two strands of RNA are present and also is present an enzyme called as reverse transcriptase. And do we remember reverse transcriptase will do reverse of transcription, it will convert RNA into DNA and then DNA will replicate and then DNA again become RNA and such viruses are called as retroviruses. Now, if you make a medicine or a vaccine, the first thing that the medication has to do is destroy the RNA. Genetic material has to be destroyed. But look at the protection around the HIV virus. There are two protein cores, there is a lipid coat and to penetrate all these layers and enter inside and destroy the RNA is a very difficult thing and that makes HIV one of the deadliest viruses ever found in human history. So, how does this HIV spread be understood? Where is HIV found? HIV has been found in saliva, in tears, in cerebrospinal fluid, in blood, semen, vaginal fluids and breast milk. So sir, HIV is found in tears, urine, saliva, cerebrospinal fluid, breast milk, blood, semen, vaginal fluid, something HIV is uh, Sir, HIV is found in urine. It is found in saliva. So sir, suppose you go to a swimming pool and swimming pool may you are swimming with many people, the water in the pool is chlorinated. And chlorinated water enters into your mouth, it causes irritation and you find people going to the edge of the pool and spitting. So kitne look spit karte hai swimming pool ke andar, HIV is found in saliva when HIV spread by sharing the same swimming pool or some you are sharing a cold drink aap college mein jaate ho canteen mein one of you orders for a pepsi or a thumbs up you have a sip pass it on to someone they have a sip pass it on to someone then HIV spread by these mechanisms by salivary contact luckily for all of us though HIV has been found in saliva the concentration of HIV is very less because saliva is a salt based media. Similarly, tears and urine are salt based media. Unki under HIV concentration was kam hota hai. But in sugar rich media, blood rich in glucose, breast milk rich in lactose, or uh, seminal fluid, vaginal fluid, rich in fructose, HIV concentration is very high. Even one drop of infected blood can cause HIV transmission to pass from one person to the other. So HIV is the transmit ho sakta hai, a drop of blood se. And sir, HIV passes by blood, then can a mosquito bite spread HIV? Sir, jab mosquito humne bite karta hai, suna hai, if we have got plasmodium vivax in our body, in other words, the malaria parasite, then the blood will come in with plasmodium, the mosquito climbs and bites another person, and that means, sir, uh, HIV will go into another person, and, uh, sorry, uh, plasmodium will go into another person, and spread malaria from one person to the other. So, what about HIV virus? We are so blessed by nature, though HIV is found in blood and the mosquito bites and takes blood inside, the good thing is mosquitoes always ingest that blood and when they ingest it, HIV cannot survive in the acidic pH of the stomach and HIV dies in the acidic pH of the stomach that is the reason it doesn't return to the salivary gland and does not pass by biting another person because HIV ingests. 
unlike plasmodium vivax plasmodium can survive in the acidic ph and go back to the salivary gland and will be infecting another person so we are lucky that unlike plasmodium hiv is not resistant to the acidic ph hiv dies in the acidic ph of the stomach and hiv does not transmit from one person to the other by a mosquito bite so what is the time period of getting hiv now this makes hiv the deadliest of all viruses once you get infected with hiv after 5 to 10 years you will get symptoms of hiv and aids so it takes 5 to 10 years for the virus to multiply in your body and that time period of 5 to 10 years is called as the incubation period and that means a very long incubation period is there so for 5 to 10 years the person is asymptomatic but he is hiv positive he is having the hiv virus and he will or she will unknowingly transmit the virus to other people particularly by a sexual route sexual mechanism se hiv pass hota hai kyunki time lag or the incubation period is very long 5 to 10 years are required for hiv to transmit from one person to the other and before it develops signs and symptoms पांच से दस साल के इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड में इतने बॉडी में इच्छा भी होते हैं कि इट विल पास सेक्सुअली टू अदर पीपल दैट टेक्स इच्छा भी अ डेडली डेडली वायरस सर हाउ डज इच्छा की इंफेक्शन प्रोग्रेस टू एड्स व्हाट विल हैपन हाउ डज इच्छा की बिकम एड्स सर इच्छा भी वंस इट एंटर्स आवर बॉडी से इट इज एंटर्ड इन बाय द सेक्सुअल रूट देन हाउ विल इच्छा की मल्टीप्लाई HIV goes into our body and attacks macrophages and T helper lymphocytes. HIV attacks macrophages. Macrophages, your neutrophils and monocytes. HIV attacks macrophages, neutrophils and monocytes, and it infects. T4 helper lymphocytes. T4 helper lymphocytes are the main WBCs which attack or recognize the surface protein called as antigen. So antigen recognition is done by T4 helper lymphocytes, and then it gives messages to B lymphocytes to shoot out antibodies. So if you remember. Recognizing surface protein called antigen is done by T4 helper lymphocyte. This is called as cell-mediated immunity. And cell-mediated immunity, in other words, recognizing antigen of any microorganism is done by T4 helper lymphocyte. Now, what will HIV virus do? ये है आपका T4 helper lymphocyte. और उसके सर्फिस पे एक प्रोटीन होता है विच इज कॉल्ड एज सी सी आर फाइव एंड सी सी आर फाइव प्रोटीन ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज सीडी फोर रिसेप्ट एंड डू वी रिमेंबर एच आई वी वायरस हैज गॉट ऑन इन सर्फिस अ प्रोटीन कॉल्ड एज जी पी वन ट्वेंटी If you remember, HIV के सर्फेस पे we have the protein called as GP120 and GP120 attaches to the GP120 attaches to the CCR5 or CD4 receptor and once the receptor starts, HIV will pass its genetic material inside and sir, ये है It's uh, the T4 uh, uh, helper lymphocyte. This is its DNA, and HIV passes its own RNA inside. And HIV का दो strands of RNA अंदर चला जाता है. Also goes inside reverse 
transcriptase enzyme and HIE ka reverse transcriptase enzyme helps in conversion of RNA into DNA. So RNA will become DNA which is called as reverse transcription. So HIV virus ka RNA by reverse transcriptase enzyme becomes DNA which is called as reverse transcription and this DNA then goes into the T4 helper lymphocyte DNA and fuses with the T4 helper lymphocyte DNA and then that is called as a pro-DNA so this is pro-DNA and that will fuse with the T4 helper lymphocyte DNA and now this DNA will undergo replication this DNA replicates and along with the T4 helper lymphocyte DNA even the pro-DNA of the HIV virus will replicate and this will now produce lots of daughter DNA so it can be lots of daughter DNA and then daughter DNA again get converted into RNA DNA becomes RNA and then RNA undergoes protein synthesis to form a protein coat, another protein coat, a lipid coat with GP120. In other words, daughter HIV viruses are created inside and these daughter HIV viruses will multiply the T4 helper lymphocyte rupture the T4 helper lymphocyte and lots of daughter HIV viruses are liberated. Once daughter HIV viruses are liberated, they will attack new T4 helper lymphocyte and go inside uh, HIV ka CCR5 receptor or TD4 receptor will attach to GP120 of the HIV and what will enter inside is the RNA along with reverse transcriptase RNA using reverse transcriptase will form DNA called pro-DNA pro-DNA integrates into the DNA of the T4 helper lymphocyte DNA multiplies DNA again becomes RNA RNA forms new proteins all around it and the new protein codes, lipid code and the number of HIV will keep on increasing it takes 5 to 10 years for HIV to become significantly higher and your T4 helper lymphocyte count becomes lower so HIV ka number badte rehta hai T4 helper lymphocyte ka number kam hote rehta hai and after 5 to 10 years the number of T4 helper lymphocytes becomes so less in your body itne kam T4 helper lymphocytes reh jayenge ki now suppose you have TB bacteria tuberculosis bacteria TB called as mycobacterium tuberculin then the bacteria will enter inside your body it is the surface protein called antigen and T4 helper lymphocyte ka number is na kam ho gaya hai it cannot recognize antigen means your B lymphocyte cannot shoot out antibodies and TB bacteria multiplies very fast in your body and you get tuberculosis so what has HIV done? HIV has not killed any particular part of your body HIV has reduced your T4 helper lymphocyte count in other words your cell mediated immunity collapses and no doubt the virus is called as human immunodeficiency virus it decreases your immunity and now you get opportunistic infection opportunistic infections like tuberculosis TB ho jata hai in hot countries like India in tropical countries like India tuberculosis happens in colder countries like in USA, Canada, Europe, pneumonia, pneumonia ke bacteria, diplococcus pneumonia enters 
and pneumonia of the lungs take place and eventually a person will die. But mind you, the person will not die because of the virus HIV, which is the primary infection. The person will die of opportunistic infections like tuberculosis or pneumonia and that will eventually cause death of the person. As a matter of fact, so you have mycobacterium tuberculosis fungi, aspergillosis of the lung caused by aspergilla fungi, parasites, toxoplasma, is are toxoplasmosis of the lung and sir, TB, pneumonia, toxoplasmosis, aspergillosis, and the both are opportunistic infections go there, just a person will eventually die. So that is the reason of death. The virus doesn't kill you, the virus decreases your immunity and bacteria, fungi, that cause opportunistic infection, secondary infection, which eventually leads to death of the person. So this is the way HIV kills you. Sir, when do you call a person an AIDS patient? Sir, when the helper T lymphocyte, also known as PD4 cell, count drops below 200 cells per ml of blood, then the person is declared as an AIDS patient. Your normal T lymphocyte count is 1500 cells per ml of blood. 1500 T4 alpha lymphocytes per ml of blood we have and when HIV will rupture these T4 alpha lymphocytes and the count becomes below 200 cells per ml of blood then this person is not just HIV positive, now he is called as an AIDS patient. So for 5 to 10 years, a person is called HIV positive. And after 5 to 10 years, when his blood count shows that the number of t 4 helper lymphocytes has become less than 200 per ml of blood, then he is called as an AIDS patient. And so, some people do not get infected by HIV. Now, some lucky people, they are lucky that their T4 helper lymphocyte ke upar CD4 receptor ya CCR5 receptor hota hi nahi hai. So they don't have the CD4 receptor which means GP120 of the HIV cannot enter, the HIV cannot enter inside the T4 helper lymphocyte and these people are immune to HIV or AIDS infection. So these are few lucky people in case CD4 receptor ya CCR5 receptor nahi hote hai. But so, once you get infected, and after 5 to 10 years, when you get full blown AIDS, what are the red signals you will watch out for? What will an AIDS patient complain of? Past the saal ke baad, this person ki immunity itni kam ho jati hai ki usse tuberculosis, pneumonia, other respiratory infections hone lagte hai and because of that, they will have major signs and symptoms and some minor signs and symptoms. Major signs and symptoms, fever lasting for more than one month, diarrhea lasting for more than one month, and weight loss greater than 10% of the body weight. Any patient comes to you and tells you, Dr. Saab, mujhe ek mahine se bukha raata hai. Main grosse khata hoon, so, bukhar kam ho jata hai, lekin baad mein wapis se bukhar aata hai, aur ek mahine se bukhar aata hai. And mujhe bohat diarrhea ho raha hai. And for the one month, I'm dehydrated, I'm having severe diarrhea. And I have lost at least 10 kg in one month itself. Pehle mera wazan 70 kg sa, ek mahine ke inter 60 kg se ho gaya hai. So, any person complaining of fever for more than a month, diarrhea for more than a month, weight drops greater than 10% of the body weight, immediately test him 
chances are very high he or she will suffer from HIV infection, last stages, AIDS are to come. And other minor symptoms, continuous cough, unko cough hota hai. Because of continuous respiratory infection, cough is very common. And cough ke under, saliva has yellow color, green color, in other words, there are bacterial infections of the saliva. There are swollen lymph glands, which is called lymph adenopathy. Sir, lymph glands found in your uh, tonsils and other uh, lymph glands in the head region, or in the armpits, or in the abdominal region. There are lymph glands. So you have mesenteric lymph glands, axillary lymph glands, you have oral lymph glands. All these lymph glands will swell. So you make the person sit down, put on gloves and touch his lymph glands, you will find lymph glands are swollen. If you remember, HIV ka primary cell ko ne attack karne ke liye T4 helper lymphocytes. And there are lymphocytes stored, lymphocytes are stored in your lymph glands. So HIV attacks T4 helper lymphocytes which are found in the lymph gland and causes swelling of the lymph gland. So say lymph gland swelling, lymph adenopathy of that. And then opportunistic infections happen and a person has oral thrush due to candida infection. Sir, tongue ke upar a fungus grow hota hai called as candida and they have no taste of the tongue which is called as oral thrush. And they get carposy sarcoma tumor of blood capillaries on the chest. Last cases of AIDS, a person gets a cancer of blood capillaries and patli patli blood capillaries under the skin of the chest become infected and these capillaries rupture and you get red purple colored dots all over the chest which is now called as Kaposi sarcoma and Kaposi sarcoma that is capillaries rupturing under the skin of the chest will happen and just in the last stage HIV will attack your brain not neurons but neuroglial cells I hope you remember Neuroglial cells are the connective tissue which support the neurons. And HIV neuroglial cells could destroy the data, which means your synapses open up, memory is stored in synapses inside your brain, and as synapses open up, there is dementia, in other words, severe memory loss in the last features. So any person complaining of fever, diarrhea, weight loss, cough, swollen lymph glands, uh, loss of taste due to candida, red purple colored dots on the chest because of Kaposi sarcoma, memory loss, dementia and having HIV ka last stage is very soon this person is going to die. So the golden question, how can you diagnose AIDS and how can you treat AIDS? So a diagnosis of HIV is done by Enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, ELISA. I hope you remember, I taught you this in the chapter of molecular diagnosis in the last lecture. Uh, virus HIV is so small, we cannot detect surface proteins like GP120 etc. Virus or chota. But you can detect antibodies against HIV virus. So T4 helper lymphocytes will recognize HIV virus, surface protein, antigen and B lymphocytes will shoot out antibodies. So you take a person's blood and detect antibodies against HIV virus. Agar antibody present hai, then antigen has to be present because antibodies are found only when antigen is present. So, by detecting antibodies, we can detect presence of HIV virus, which is called as ELISA, the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. But mind you, the antibodies are produced after one month of infection. 
So sir, if a person comes to you and says, Doctor, I am scared I may be having AIDS. I had sex with a prostitute, a commercial sex worker. I am tense. I am having HIV infection. Uh, can you please diagnose it for me? You are the person, when did you have sex with that unknown person? He says, one week ago. Will you do the Eliza right now? No sir, it will come negative. So you will say, aap ek mahine ke baad aiye, and after one month if it comes, now sufficient antibodies are formed in the body, and that means enough antibodies are there, now do his ELISA test, and his ELISA if it is positive, he is then having HIV infection. And along with ELISA, we go for a very sophisticated test called as Western blood test. Western blood test may HIV ka surface protein GP120, GP41, P17, P24 is a protein diagnosed kiye jate hai very sophisticated test which is called as Western blood test. And you can also do PCR, polymerase chain reaction which I taught you in the last lecture and something called immunofluorescent diagnosis. So sir, you can do ELISA, confirm it by Western blot or do PCR for immunofluorescent diagnosis and by this mechanism, HIV diagnosis is done. Then comes the golden question, can you kill HIV? Has any medicine been found that you can destroy HIV virus? The answer is yes, we have found viruses are destroyed by certain drugs. Then can you save a person's life? No, you cannot save a person's life. You can extend his life by a few years, but you cannot save his life. Now why does yes, you can kill HIV, but no, you cannot save a person's life? Sir, many retroviral medicines have been discovered, antiretroviral drugs, and usme a treatment is called HART Highly Active Antiretroviral Therapy So sir, sabse pehle 1981 mein jab HIV aaya there was no cure for it People were dying left right center of AIDS Somewhere in the 1990s scientists found a wonderful drug I'm sure you have heard the name Azidothyridine AZT which is called as Zidomudi Chemistry of everyday life You were taught this in chemistry first lecture That Azidothyridine is used for killing HIV virus I hope you remember that Yes, Azidothyridine was a wonderful drug It was taught in the 1990s and scientists were very happy Eureka! We have killed HIV virus. We have found medicine to kill HIV. And many people were given zidomudine or azidothyridine and they were given this. Six months later, all of them had a liver failure. Zidomudine ka side effect severe hai. It kills HIV but it also is hepatotoxic. It kills liver cells. And that is the way Zidomudine cannot be given all the time because that will kill your liver cells as a side effect. Then we found another medicine, Lapimudine. And Lapimudine also kills HIV but it causes nephrotoxicity, kidney failure. And then they found Nevarepine. Nevarepine again is good medicine but it causes bone marrow depression. So bone marrow ke cells come ho jate hai means RBC production will become less. And they found ribavirin. Ribavirin doesn't kill HIV but ribavirin increases your T helper lymphocyte count. So ribavirin is aapka T4 helper lymphocyte count bada jata hai. So all these medicines have a side effect so what have scientists now done? Rather than giving only Zidomudine or Lapimudine or uh, uh, Nevarepine or Ribavirin, 
दे हैव गिवन अ कॉकटेल ऑफ ऑल मेडिसिन तो हर एक मेडिसिन का एक कॉकटेल यानी एक छोटा डोज लैमिडी एक छोटा डोज अजिडोथाइमिडी एक छोटा डोज नेवरपी एक छोटा डोज राइबाबारी इज कंबाइन टूगेदर एंड दिस कॉम्बिनेशन इज गिवन नाउ ऑल मेडिसिन विल किल एच आई वी एंड ऑल ऑफ दे विल हैव साइड इफेक्ट बट द साइड इफेक्ट आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू लिवर किडनी बोन मैरो एंड धीरे धीरे द एच आई वी काउंट विल बिकम रिड्यूज एंड साइड इफेक्ट आर लेस बिकॉज वी हैव गिवेन स्मॉल डोजेज ऑफ ऑल दीज मेडिसिन सो यू कैन प्रोलॉन्ग द पर्सन लाइफ बाय टेन टू फिफ्टीन ईयर्स बट दीज मेडिसिन कैन नॉट किल ऑल दी एच आई वी इन योर बॉडी एच आई वी सो रेजिस्टेंट कि इट विल नॉट गेट किल्ड कंप्लीटली सो it's a little process and these medicines have to be given life long and life long these medicines are given and eventually after 10 to 15 years side effects of the medicine will be severe you will have liver toxicity bone marrow toxicity kidney toxicity and you have to stop giving those medicines otherwise the liver kidneys bone marrow will fail and eventually you stop giving medicine and hiv count will again increase and eventually the person will die of either tuberculosis or pneumonia so these medicines can be given but they will not be able to save a person's life they can only and only extend a person's life by 10 to 15 years eventually each and every will kill the person there is no cure for aids and so prevention better than cure so sir what can you do to prevent the naco national aids control organization along with ngos are educating people about aids december first is the world aids day and december first go as a matter of fact throughout the year but khas kar ke december first go lot of advice is given to people please don't have sex with an unknown person don't have polygamous relationship have a monogamous sexual relationship with only one person and even if you are having sex with other people always wear a condom the condom is not 100% guarantee because condom agar latex rubber sheet penis pe dal diya jata hai it stretches and when it stretches pores are created in the condom hiv virus may transmit even through a condom so condoms are not 100% effective and blood before being transfused or organ transplantations when they are done always the donor is checked now we know it by elisa and western blot and if they find that the blood is infected with hiv then this blood is not transfused uh, people are told not to share razor blades you remember blood contact is called hiv infection so razor blades ek bar use karte hain and they are immediately thrown away so you go to a barber shop he will cut your hair side blocks cut karne ke liye razor blades use karte hain but he will immediately throw away the razor blade so all these safety mechanisms are there and eventually you will have prevention is better than cure prevention is one of the best thing not a cure against hiv but a prevention against hiv and uh before we end it i have a very nice little logic for you ya the syllabus mein nahi hai but you all should know about it in india there is a drug company an ayurvedic drug company called as the himalayan drug company and they have found a wonderful ayurvedic medicine now that ayurvedic medicine is still under research and maybe in a few years we will get this medicine out in the open what does the medicine do now it is an ayurvedic medicine so unlike lamivudine nevarapine azithromycin it doesn't kill hiv virus but sir this medicine which is an ayurvedic medicine if given to the person goes inside the hiv 
and block the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Reverse transcriptase ko block kar deta hai by lock and key mechanism of enzymes. So enzyme reverse transcriptase lock ho jata hai by this medicine. So HIV virus marega nahi. But because reverse transcriptase block kar diya gaya hai, the RNA cannot use reverse transcriptase to become DNA. And RNA cannot become DNA, so that means multiplication of HIV viruses will stop. And HIV will live for a few days because it cannot multiply in the absence of reverse transcriptase the number of HIV will gradually start decreasing. And it's an Ayurvedic medicine, so there are no side effects. So sir, this is under trial, maybe in a few years from now, this medicine will be available worldwide and we can be very proud that we have got a treatment for HIV AIDS by an Indian Ayurvedic medicine, a wonderful thing. So third, two viruses there, HIV and coronavirus. If a treatment mil jata hai by any mechanism, we can be very proud. For HIV at least, we are going to get this Ayurvedic medicine coming very soon in the market. And this will be a worldwide help by India, our own system of medicine called as Ayurveda. We can be very proud of that. Someday we read in the Times of India, Indian Ayurvedic medicine is the cure for AIDS and we can hold a head high that the Indian tricolor is now flying worldwide. AIDS has been conquered by Ayurveda. Beautiful thing. Pray to God to shake touch wood. This should be happening. Alright? So, sure, we have analyzed everything about AIDS. We'll have a small break and we'll continue further ahead.